sovereign one, I rest in your plan. From the depths to the dawn, you are there, your promise is strong. I will trust with all that I am. Sing his name.
but keep that going for the King of Kings tonight, amen. How many know he's worthy of all our praise and all of our honor tonight in the name of Jesus? Amen. He's good in all of his ways, Elder Jared. All of his ways. That means when I'm down and out, can't nobody do me like Jesus. He picked me up and he turned me around and he placed my feet on solid ground. Amen. I know I've said it a lot when I get up here, but there's something about standing on solid ground. I tell you, it won't fall out from under you. I like that I'm standing on a firm foundation. And if we didn't have this platform, we'd be falling through right now. But I thank God for concrete, and I thank God for this platform that tells me that I'm standing on a firm foundation. It's not only this platform, but it's the Word of God. And without the Word of God, we wouldn't have that firm foundation. Amen? Amen. As Sister Julie comes to sing the special tonight, amen, we're going to go to a time of just giving up. Giving up, yeah, pretty much. Giving time, giving time as offerings. Lord, I said that wrong. God, forgive me. I guess I need to pray to you. You know, engage my heart a little more. Cause, <laughs> Amen. Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you, God, for just God to be able to give to you tonight. God, give to the work of ministry, God, in your name. God, we thank you, God, for being able to come tonight. God, to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, heal our hearts, heal our land. God, in the name of Jesus, God, we come to worship you in song and truth. God, bless the ones that had to give and those not to give next time. God, in the name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name. your heart's desire, why don't you stand to your feet and just put your hands together, amen, and let your neighbor know, I shall not be moved, amen, it doesn't matter, amen, what I'm facing, I shall not be moved, it doesn't matter what I'm going through, amen, I shall not be moved, is that your testimony tonight? Give the Lord another great hand cup of praise and thank him right now, amen, my feet is firmly planted. Amen. And the things of God and the ways of God and the word of God. Thank you, sis. Wonderful job tonight. Give the Lord a great hand clap. That's a wonderful song. I haven't heard that song in years and took me back a mighty long way. Amen. 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 How many is thankful for the presence of the Lord that is here tonight? Aren't you thankful? How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord this evening? Amen. How many will clap their hands and rejoice and say, the Lord has given me another day to worship him. The Lord has given me another day to magnify him, and therefore his praises shall continually be in my mouth. The Bible says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Would you do that for just a moment on this Wednesday evening? 
magnify the Lord together and exalt his name together for he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Everyone shout hallelujah. Very, very thankful. Amen. Elders, if you would come forward tonight. Amen. We want to pray for those that are in need. Amen. In the house of the Lord this evening. Amen. So we ask if you have a need tonight, make your way to the front. Come in faith believing. Amen. That the Lord is going to minister to you tonight. I want to thank you for praying for me over the last, amen, week and a half. As you can tell, I'm still trying to recover. I can't shave yet. It's really painful. Amen. Believe you me, I'm ready for it in the name of the Lord. But I want to thank you for praying. Amen. I'm recovering. Amen. I, my desire is to be in the pulpit to preach on Sunday morning. And so we thank the Lord for what the Lord is doing. The Lord has touched my voice and the blisters in my throat. Amen. To a great degree over the last couple of days. And so thank you for your prayers. I greatly appreciate it. How many is thankful for healing that's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? How many will testify tonight that when I called on the name of the Lord for healing, the Lord healed my body? You have, you have a testimony tonight. I thank God. I thank God for that. So if you have a need, make your way to the front. Come in faith, believing while you're coming tonight. Amen. We have some very special needs we want to pray over. If I can have some ladies that gather behind Sister Susie tonight, we want to pray. We're so thankful that Sister Marlene Donovan is able to be in the house of the Lord this evening, and we want to pray for her. Amen, amen, amen. I need some of you men as well to gather around Brother Dale Gerald. He needs a miracle in his body, and the Lord, amen, has given him a miracle time and time again. And, and I'm going to say this tonight, that I believe tonight is no different. I believe that God's going to bring him another miracle tonight. How many believes that? Amen. He was in the hospital over the last few days, but we're glad he's out and in the house of the Lord, and he's come to praise the Lord tonight. And Give thanksgiving for what the Lord is going to do. And so thank you, men, for coming, helping us to pray. Need some men to gather in behind with us in cell tonight. And thank you, ladies, for gathering behind, Sister Christian. Amen. Need to pray for Sister Julia Jones. She had a procedure today. Want to pray for her. Amen. Want to continue to pray for Sister Anita Clark that God would touch her body. Amen. We're glad to tell you that her procedure went well. She's home and recovering. And let's give the Lord praise for that and thank the Lord. Amen. She uh, she still has a season to navigate through, but we're going to pray that the Lord will strengthen and help. And also, Sister Barnes, in need of prayer. Brother Brian Atkins, Sister Stephanie Wells, want to pray for her. Brother John Allman, little Gus Farley is sick tonight. Amen. And Sister Farley texted me. She said, Pastor, Gus wanted me to make sure to text you and make sure the church to pray for him tonight. He's battling a real bad migraine, and you know how that is, and it's causing, amen, a lot of pain and sickness. And so we want to pray for him. Brother Joe Hose. I want to continue to pray for him. The hasty children are sick tonight. Angie Kenny is in need of prayer. Also want to pray for Sister Beverly Pritt's niece. Amen. Shandell, is that correct? Shondell uh, has a broken ankle and is going to require surgery. And so we need to pray. And then Carrie Rains is in need of prayer. I want to continue to pray for Brother Wally, that God would touch him. And also Brother Brendan Bush's grandfather passed away. And that funeral is tonight. I want to pray. And also want to pray for the Salmons family, especially Madison and Brody and, and Ethan, their grandfather passed away, and that service will be tomorrow night at Tornado, and so we want to pray for this family that God would touch and minister. If you have a need tonight, would you just raise your hand? If you have a need tonight, just raise your hand. Keep that hand raised all across this building. Just keep your hand raised if you have a need tonight. I got a scripture for you. My God shall supply. You've got a promise in the Word of God. Turn to neighbor and tell him, you've got a promise tonight. You've raised your hand with the need, but God has already given you a promise. That scripture was penned years ago before you even had a need, before you was even born and on this earth. And God says, my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. And I want you to raise both your hands right now and say, God, I believe you're going to provide tonight. 
God, I believe. Lord, I believe you're going to move right now and you're going to bless and you're going to provide and you're going to heal and you're going to deliver. I want you to begin to praise him and worship him right now and thank him for that which he's going to do right now. I want you to pray and believe that divine healing is coming to your body right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. And God, by the authority of your word and the power of the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, I pray and believe right now in the name of the Lord that God, when the saints of God and when the ministry of this church lays hands on these people tonight, that God, divine healing would come, that God, you would provide, that you would move on their behalf. I ask it now in the name of the Lord. That's it. Now lay your hands on the people of God right now and believe that a miracle is coming to your life. Believe that God's going to supply that need right now. In the name of the Lord God, we believe and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we pray right now. God, we pray. God, we believe that you're going to minister tonight in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God, we worship you. God, we praise your matchless name tonight, God. God, we pray that you would move on our behalf tonight, Lord. We pray that you would visit your people tonight, oh God. God, we receive. That's it, saint of God. Believe right now. God, believe right now in the name of the Lord. Lord, we believe for the miraculous to rest. God, we pray and believe right now. God, by the authority of your word and by the power of the name of Jesus, we pray and believe for divine healing right now. In the name of the Lord. God, we call on your name right now in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. God, we pray and believe that you're going to minister to your people tonight, God. God, we pray and believe. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I feel the presence of the Lord. I feel the Spirit of the Lord in this house right now. I feel the touch of God in this house right now. I want you to believe the Lord is here in your prayer right now. If you believe that, would you raise your hands as high as you can raise them right now and declare with the raising of the hand and the declaration of your tongue, God, I believe that you're here in my prayer right now. God, I believe you're here in our petition right now. For Lord, it says in your word that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. God, we believe right now in the name of the Lord. God, I loose the gift of faith in this house. That's it. Exercise your faith right now. Exercise your faith right now. 
Exercise your faith right now in the name of Jesus. stand in the gap for a family member or a friend or a saint of God you want to stand in the gap for them would you raise your hand right now and we're going to pray for every family member we're going to pray for a saint of God that comes to mind right now we're going to pray for that individual that God is placing on your mind right now in the name of Jesus God you're hearing our prayers right now God we declare God we declare right now in the name of Jesus we declare the name of Jesus, miracles over our family. We declare right now miracles and provisions and blessings and deliverance over the people of God right now in the name of Jesus.
Glory and honor to the name of Jesus. I don't know if you realize it or not, but something walked into this place a few minutes ago and settled in this house that wasn't here when I first got here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus is here. The glory is in this house. Miracles are in this house right now. Your miracle is in this house right now. You see, you've heard that so many times and you've left without it, and so you think it's just church as usual. But, ladies and gentlemen, your miracle is in this house right now. My, my, my. If I needed something from God, I would believe Him for it like I've never believed Him for it before right now. Come on, let's raise our hands one more time. If you have the Holy Ghost, pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many is glad for the Holy Ghost? Yes. Hallelujah. They say we're crazy and we're weird and we're fanatical because we talk in tongues. Uh, but I read in the Bible where it says, build yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Thank God, Elder John, for the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. We appreciate the singers tonight, don't we, for leading us in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. My, 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 what a precious, precious presence of the Lord that's here. I have a word from the Lord for you. I have very clear direction. We're going to pick up where we left off last month and finish this message on prayer. I don't know if the rest of you preachers deal with what I deal with when it's my turn to preach. But my God in heaven, when you think the battle can't get any hotter, just let pastor call and ask, can you preach Wednesday night? Can you preach Sunday morning? And then it seems like it all breaks loose. But we're going to go into the word of the Lord tonight. We're going to fight hell with the only thing that I know that will defeat hell. The Word of God. Praise the Lord. Book of Matthew, chapter number 6. We'll read verses 5 through 13 in your hearing. They'll get it on the screen for you. Those of you that have your Bibles. I know we don't emphasize it much anymore, but I believe it's important to bring your Bible to church. It's important to bring your Bible to church. There ain't no soldier that's going to war without his weapon. Matthew 6, verse number 5 says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. When thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before ye ask him. After this manner therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. 
So I want to preach to you tonight or talk to you tonight, probably a little bit of teaching and preaching, on the subject of prayer. And this is going to be part number two, and we're going to wrap it up in the name of the Lord. Why don't we look to the Lord one more time as a family of believers and pray. Lord, we love you tonight. We praise you and we appreciate you. We thank you for your power, for your presence uh, that we feel in this house. We thank you for the glory that we feel in this house. Lord, I pray that you would take complete and total control of this service. Use my mind, use my mouth, use me tonight, Lord, to glorify yourself. Uh, Anoint every hearer, anoint every mind, every ear, every heart. Help us to hear, help us to understand, and help us to receive what thus saith the word of the Lord. God, we ask all of these things in the mighty, matchless, holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody shout in Jesus' name. Why don't you clap your hands as you're being seated. So just to recap a little bit, we talked about prayer last month, and I told you what prayer was not. And then I told you what prayer was. Prayer is simply you talking to God, me talking to God, a two-way communication between us and the Master. Amen? Amen? I told you that you didn't have to be in a certain place or in a particular position to pray. Some people like to walk, some people like to sit, some people like to kneel, and all of those things are okay. Whatever works for you, do it, but don't stop praying. I told you that as we learn to pray, we learn the power of prayer. We learn to appreciate the saying that where there is much prayer, there is much power. Where there is little prayer, there is little power, and where there is no prayer, there is no power. I told you that prayer is not preparation for the battle, but that prayer is the battle. Amen. And so then I told you what prayer was for. Prayer brings our spirit closer to God's spirit. Prayer changes our attitude. Prayer affects the enemy. Prayer affects heaven. And prayer affects others. You and I are the only thing that stand between total destruction in some people's lives. We're the, our, our prayer life, our prayers, our love, our compassion for them is the only thing that stands uh, between them and destruction. And for that reason, we have to always be a praying people. We have to always be a praying people. We have to always be a praying people. I told you that we have to understand that there's no shortcut in developing a prayer life. There's no fast track to developing a prayer life, and there is no big secret. You simply have to get involved with praying and stick to it. Pray when you feel like praying, and pray when you don't feel like praying. Amen. Faithfulness, desire, and consistency are key ingredients to developing a successful prayer life. And we cannot let our feelings or our lack of instant answers or anything else discourage us from seeking the face of God in prayer. I told you I don't care how much the phone rings. I don't care how much the dogs bark. I don't care how much the kids fight. I do not care what comes your way. You've got to take time to pray. Prayer is the most powerful weapon the people of God have. That needs to not go here and out here, but that needs to sink in here. Prayer is the most powerful weapon you have. You overcome in prayer. You do not overcome shouting and dancing and running. And we are going to shout and dance and run. You don't overcome doing those things. You overcome one-on-one in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I told you that when we don't pray, we remain ignorant of the sound of the Lord's voice. 
We remain ignorant of His provision and His care, and we remain ignorant of His specific direction for our lives. Somebody say it's important to pray. I told you that consistency in prayer or faithfulness to prayer is not the easiest thing to accomplish because more distractions will in fact arise during your prayer time than any other time in your day. That is not a coincidence. But it's important to hang in there. Pray when you don't feel like praying. Pray when there's no emergency or crisis. Amen. Some of us only pray when something bad happens. You want me to give you a little teeny tiny revelation? If you're praying consistently and walking with the Master daily, some of those things that seem great big disasters are really not that bad at all. It's the truth. When you're walking with Him and you see things the way He sees things and you understand the mind and the heart of God as much as possible as it is for a human to do that, uh, things do not look the same uh, through His eyes. His perspective uh, is nothing like our perspective. Thank God for that. And when you walk with Him and you talk with Him and you fellowship with Him and you know Him and you trust Him and you love Him, you are not tossed to and fro with every single problem. Praise the Lord. I appreciate, I appreciate your help tonight. You might not believe it, but I am tired in body. And my back hurts. Amen. And there's nothing more than I want than to go home and get in the bed. Praise the Lord. But I'm telling you, there's something about uh, the goodness of God. And there's something uh, about the anointing of God. And there's something uh, about the power of God. Uh, amen. That will make you go a little farther than you think you can go. Yeah. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. You can be down and out. You can be busted and disgusted. You cannot know which way to turn. Seem like everything falling down around you uh, and get in the presence of God uh, and it all melts away. Uh, amen. Like snow on a Sunday. Uh, glory, glory, glory. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. I feel my help in this house. Uh, Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Praising Him makes a difference. Calling on His name makes a difference. My, 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 my. I told you that we needed to pray, and we did pray, and we had a beautiful altar call last month. When we done the first part of this message, I said we needed to pray that God would saturate us with a spirit of prayer. Amen. We need to be saturated with a spirit of prayer. I know it, this is not something to make you run and dance and shout, but we want revival. And we preach revival. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a price uh, that has to be paid uh, for revival. Just because a couple of folks get the Holy Ghost in this service or that service or the next service or somebody gets healed, uh, that doesn't mean we're in revival. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, America needs uh, a Book of Acts revival, and it does not come uh, with playing patty cake with Jesus on Wednesday and Sunday. I know that's hard, Pastor. Uh, amen. It's tight, as some say, but it is right. We want Book of Acts revival. Those folks fasted, uh, amen, and the Bible says that they only eat enough food to sustain life. 
What are you willing to pay for revival? You all have learned by now I'm not some patty cake, mamby, bamby, lip wristed preacher. Amen. I'm some fella that whenever I get the microphone, I say what needs to be said, uh, and I go to my seat. Uh, hallelujah. And some people love me, and some people hate me. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, uh, you can guarantee tonight uh, that I've heard from heaven. Uh, I've heard from Jesus, uh, and I've been with Jesus, uh, and I know what it's going to take uh, to get to where we want to go. Praise the Lord. I told you without a desire, and we're getting ready to start on the part that we left off, but I told you that without a desire that your prayer life would die, your spiritual life would die, and your effectiveness in the kingdom of God would vanish. Having a desire when you pray is like having a guarantee that your spiritual hunger will be satisfied. Your Bible says in Matthew 5 and 6, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Mark 11 and 24 says, Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. So I submit to you tonight uh, that desire is a craving for something strong enough uh, to be willing to sacrifice uh, for what it is that you want. I'm going to say it again. Desire is a craving for something strong enough to be willing to sacrifice for what you want. A strong desire enables you to stand your ground in the face of trying circumstances. However, your desire must be strong enough to fight off the complexities of life. A lot of the things that bother us is not the devil, and it's not hell. It's just life being life. Amen. That's another little revelation for you, everything in the devil. He can't do a third of what we give him credit for. Psalm 42 verses 1 and 2 says, As the heart painteth after the water brooks, so painteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? We need to pray until it becomes an addiction, until we feel we can't live without it. That should be our desire. Yes. Psalm 63, 1 and 2 says, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is to see thy power and thy glory so as I have seen in the sanctuary. If we have a hunger and a thirst like that, brothers and sisters, the Lord is going to hear and answer our prayers. Desire is so important to keep a healthy prayer life. I would even go as far as to say one cannot live without the other. To increase desire is to increase our prayer life. You say, Brother Brown, how do we increase our prayer life tonight. Uh, the way to increase our desire, the way to increase our prayer life uh, is to pray and ask God for the desire, to feed our spirit the Word of God, and to neglect what the flesh wants. Now, I can preach there. We could preach, uh, amen, for a month of Sundays. Uh, right there, Pastor. Uh, right there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, pray Read the Word of God and crucify the flesh. We live in a day and a time where people say if it feels good, do it. But God says, uh, crucify the flesh, uh, crucify the flesh, uh, deny the flesh uh, what it wants when it goes against uh, the Word and the will of God. And there is a lot of times... I'd rather go, go do some extracurricular activity rather than pray. I'd rather watch, turn Netflix on and watch some TV show or some movie rather than read the Word of God. Folks, that's where we all are. 
Amen. It ain't no different for me than it is for you. It ain't no different for pastor than it is for us. There's a lot of other things the flesh wants to do, but we know that if we're going to do what God wants us to do, we have to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Jesus. A lot of churches won't preach it. A lot of preachers won't preach it because it don't make the folks shout. You can't have a praise break preaching like this, but I'll tell you what preaching like this will do. It'll set hell upside down, and it'll cause revival fire to begin to burn in the hearts of the people of God. I don't know about you, but I miss the days of hard preaching. When pastor gets up here and he looks at us and he says, fellas, I want you to tell it straight and I want you to tell it right, I take him seriously. Because the church had a whole lot more going on when preachers was telling it right and telling it straight and not caring about the opinion of the people. Is this all right? We need hard preaching. We need preachers that are on fire. We need preachers that have a prayer life. Amen, Brother Brown. I love you, good folks. A faithful prayer life is the first thing the devil attacks. The feeling of wanting to neglect the Word of God in prayer. I'm too tired, too sick, too busy. Simply just don't want to do it. And that's where I fall right there. Sometimes I just don't want to do it. But it's non-negotiable. There are some folks that like to go to the gym and it, it, it's, it's, it's a part of their life. And I mean it's heaven or hell for them. And they'll say it's non-negotiable. I just flew across the country, but as soon as my plane landed and I got checked in the hotel, I went to the gym and exercised because it's non-negotiable. What if the people of God acted like that when it come to spending time with God in prayer and in the Word? It's non-negotiable. Hallelujah. God must like this because the more I go, the better I feel. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Ladies and gentlemen, just like we would force ourselves to eat in order to gain strength, we have to make ourselves press beyond the attack of the devil against our prayer life and pray anyway. We cannot let our prayer life die because if it dies, we spiritually die. Isaiah 26 and 9 says, With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Prayer is a lifelong venture that requires consecrated effort for lasting results. The main purpose in praying is getting to know the Lord and desiring to know Him better. Because the better we know Him, the easier it is for us to communicate with Him. It's just like with folks in your everyday life. The first time you meet Him, it ain't this. And it, for, for, for some of us, uh, and this don't include Brother Price because he can talk to anybody. I mean, he just like he's best friends. Brother Brown, I struggle. I'll, 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 somebody will introduce me to somebody and then I'll go stand in the corner. <laughs> and then five or ten minutes they'll get uncomfortable and come and ask me a question. And I'll answer their question and then I'll stand back in the corner. <laughs> Just perfectly, perfectly satisfied and fine. But you can ask Brother Michael Croucher over there when I get good and comfortable around you. Sometimes I'm more than a handful. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I might bust out in song at an inappropriate time. 
I may send him a text that's going to make him laugh out loud at an inappropriate time because I'm comfortable with him because I've gotten to know him. And that's the way it is with all of us. When we get to know folks, it's easy or easier to talk to them. You get comfortable with them. You understand them. You know when to bother them and when not to bother them. Some of you folks that are young married folks, you're still trying to learn that right time to bother and not bother. Praise the Lord. One thing's for sure, when you learn it, your life will be better. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But the more time we spend with God, the better we will know God. And the more we get to know Him, the more, we're go the more time we're going to want to spend with Him. There's times that I, 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 get, I get so focused and so into it uh, that I just don't want to leave. Because I know what's waiting outside the prayer closet. I know there's phone calls and there's text messages and there's the hustle and the bustle of everyday life that I have to deal with. And just for that moment in His presence, when all of the world vanishes away, Amen. When there's no bills due. Come on, somebody. When the car don't have any problems. When everybody at work's getting along. and That moment in His presence makes me want to be there over and over time and time again. That's what I'm trying to relay to you tonight. For just a moment in His presence. It won't take much to get addicted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many times when newborn saints get involved in prayer, they very quickly outgrow saints that have been around for a while. Hello. We don't get to know the Lord just by being around, just by attending Wednesday and Sunday services. We do not get to know the Lord just by hearing the preacher preach when we attend church. We get to know the Lord by seeking Him on a regular basis. And we don't seek God just when we have a need. We seek Him for who He is and for what being in His presence does for us and Him. Psalm 16 and 11 says, Thou wilt show the path of life. In thy presence is the fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to get involved in the ministry of prayer because of what it will do for us and for what it means to the kingdom of God. There are souls uh, that are being held hostage uh, by the spirits and the powers of hell. Right now, they're waiting for me and they're waiting for you uh, to plead the blood uh, on their behalf uh, for deliverance by the hand uh, of Almighty God. It, not, it, may, it may not be your son or your daughter that's addicted to drugs tonight. It may be your sister or your brother sitting in this sanctuary whose child is just one hit away from overdosing and going into eternity. But imagine how much more fervent you would pray and seek the face of God and plead the blood of Jesus if it was your child. That moves me. Americans are selfish people. We are selfish people. I know it's happening to my brother and my sister, but Lord, please don't let it happen to me. When in fact, when my brother or my sister's hurting, uh, if I'm in unity with them in the body of Christ, uh, when they hurt, I should hurt. got something to say but y'all ain't gonna like it I was praying the other day 
One of the other places that I like to pray seems like one of the places where I get most of my messages and most of the, the time when God speaks to me is when I'm in the shower. That's, that's some of the only alone time that I have. But God spoke to me as clear as I've ever heard Him speak. And He said the biggest problem in the American church is not a lack of prayer. All right? He said the biggest problem in the American church is not a lack of music, not a lack of praise, nor a lack of worship. There's not a lack of the use of the gifts of the Spirit. I said, okay, what's the biggest problem? Then I said, I've heard a lot of preachers say this. They all seem to know the big secret. What's wrong with the church? He told me, he said, the biggest problem in my church is that my people don't dwell together in love and unity. If I get too out of, you just pull the coattail and it'll, we'll wind it right up. Hallelujah. The key to a book of Acts revival is not necessarily scheduling another prayer meeting. It's not necessarily scheduling a series of meetings that some folks call revival that really isn't revival. Hallelujah. But the greatest need among us is that we love our brother and our sister as if they were our own blood. One of the problems we have, Pastor, is that unless the preacher that's up preaching is a part of my clique and my club and my, my specific little personal group, then I'm not going to get with him and I'm not going to help him preach. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When God's people get together in love and unity, you can find out about it in the book of Acts. They sold everything they had, put it in a common treasury, and the only thing that was between them was the love that they shared for Jesus and the propitiation of the gospel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. We're going to have Book of Acts miracles not when we talk in tongues more, but when we carry one another's burdens and love one another more. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is not just a North Charleston apostolic message. This is a message for the American church because the American church has a problem. I heard Brother Stone King say something one time. He said, if I could add one scripture to the book, just one, and I know I can't, but if I could add one scripture to the book, it would be this. There is therefore now no competition between those who are in Christ Jesus. Your brother, your sister is not your competitor. The church down the street is not your competitor. The church across town is not your competitor. If God gives them revival, then let's praise God for what he's doing there and pray that he'll do it here. Hallelujah. 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 I, we, we need preaching, amen, uh, that's going to shake hell. We need preaching uh, that's going to make the devil mad. Uh, we need preaching uh, that's going to stir the hearts uh, of the people of God. Thank God for a pastor that loves revival, for a pastor that loves the preaching of the word of the Lord. 
That man has sit under and has heard some of the greatest preaching in all the world, and yet he still chooses to be right here, tucked away in the hills of West Virginia with me and you. Hallelujah. Is this all right, Brother Croucher? I don't care whether he thinks it's all right or not. I'm about ready to wrap this up. I done got away from the notes. Listen to what see, see what happens when you pray. When you pray, you're gonna hear from heaven. You're going to learn how to solve some problems. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to have revival in North Charleston, uh, if you want to have some great big soul revival, if you want to see Book of Acts miracles, uh, then start getting together in love and in unity. The only way I know to do it uh, is pray uh, and draw nigh to God because when you become like Him, uh, you're going to love one another as He loves us. This all comes from a relationship with Jesus. We can't afford, we cannot afford to miss what God wants to do. We can't afford to miss what God wants to do. Whether it's Wednesday night or Sunday morning or whenever else we're in the house of God, we can't afford to miss it. If you struggle, I struggle. If you're down, I'm down. Come on, somebody. I know it hurts. I know it hurts because we're selfish. But prayer is going to fix it. Prayer is going to fix it. Prayer is going to fix it. Musicians, you can come. It's been said that prayer is in intensive care, dying from the neglect by the people of God. Because when prayer leaves the house of God, conditions become worse. There's shortage of fire in the pulpit. Love grows cold in the pews. There's division, jealousy, resentment, hostility worldliness, greed, selfish ambitions, carnality, and every kind of weakness has free run of the meal. All of that happens because of a lack of a prayer life. The devil knows that if he can keep us at each other's throats, that he can hinder revival. Amen. And when a preacher comes by and shucks the corn, as Brother Price would say, and puts it line upon line and precept upon precept, we get huffed up and cross our arms and go home and say, he didn't have it tonight. <laughs> I'll try again next service. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not interested I am not interested in church as usual. I am not interested in coming and going through a form and a fashion. Pastor, I want the glory to come down. And you see, when the glory comes down and we're together like I'm talking about being together, it don't matter who lays hands on the person that gets out of the wheelchair. We're just glad they got up. It don't matter who lays hands on the person that's blind. I'm just glad they see. Hallelujah. There is no, the old timers used to say, there's no big eyes or little U's in the kingdom of God. And the more I pray, the more I realize that. It's not about me. If it wasn't for the Lord, this would simply be a feeble attempt to entertain you. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. I'm not interested in preaching the best or getting the best response. 
but I'm interested in results. I want to see God move like I've never seen him move before. Is anybody with me? Why don't you stand all over the building? I want to see God move like I've never seen. And I've seen him do some pretty great things. Our pastor's seen him do some pretty great things. The ministry in this church have seen God work miracles in their very midst. But I want to see Book of Acts right here in North Charleston Apostolic Church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't we as a family gather around this altar tonight as they begin to sing. If the preaching's challenged you, pray for God to help you. Pray for God to give you desire. Pray for God to stir you like you've never been stirred. Let's talk to the Lord.
Thank you, Elder Brown. Marvelous job. Give the man of God a great big hand for a timely word tonight. We're very, very thankful. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, I'm going to be a person of prayer. Amen. I'm going to be a man or a woman of prayer and seeking the face of the Lord. Amen. I'm reminded of the scripture that says, If my people which are called with my name will humble themselves and pray, everyone shout and pray seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven forgive their sins and heal their lands so very very thankful amen how many knows that prayer changes things and prayer makes a difference amen how many knows that God will respond amen to the prayers of his people I think we ought to give the Lord another great hand clap of praise for what he has done amen in this house tonight the Lord has blessed us you can be seated a certificate to give out tonight following service on Sunday there was something wonderful that transpired we had another baptism amen and we're very very thankful for that go ahead and give the Lord praise that's always a wonderful thing and we rejoice and we're so very very thankful for what the Lord is doing in this great man's life and so thankful that he and his family is a part of this church but on Sunday, April the 14th, 2024, following service, when all of you were on your way home, we're glad to tell you that Brother Scott Daniels went down in water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give the Lord praise. I love you. Congratulations. Thank God for you. Absolutely. Give the Lord another hand clap of praise and rejoice with Brother Scott. I love this man. He's a good man. In a short time, God has done great and mighty things, amen, for him. And I'm just thankful. It seems like each and every week someone's getting the Holy Ghost or being baptized in the name. That's the way it ought to be. Can you say amen? I'm very, very thankful for that. Amen, amen. Everyone shout Sunday morning. Amen. Don't forget Sunday school at 10 o'clock, evangelistic service at 11 o'clock, Lord willing. We'll be preaching to you in 11 o'clock service. And I know the Lord is going to bless and minister. Amen. The Lord's going to do great work. All of our ladies, don't forget. All of our ladies, do not forget. District Ladies Conference is right around the corner. Amen. It is, amen, next week. Amen. And you see the speakers, some marvelous, marvelous speakers. The schedule is there. Uh, registration, amen. I know some of you have been working on registration. Of course, you can register at the door as well. And we have the honor and the privilege to host this ladies' conference. And so, I want to thank all of our staff for your help and helping us. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. All of our Welcome Center staff, media, audiovisual, amen. All of our staff doing each and everything that we can do to be a wonderful host. Thank you so very, very much. We greatly appreciate that. Amen. And then also, don't forget, the last Sunday of the month is Pastor Connection Fellowship Meal. And we've combined some groups, amen, for this meal at the end of the month, the vertical ages 19 to 36, and then hyphen, which is our single age, 19 to 25, and then also elevate, 37 to 50. And we want you to be a part of that wonderful meal on Sunday following service, April the 28th. The sign-up sheet is out in the uh, Welcome Center there on the table, so please put your name down if you're planning on to attend. That way we can prepare accordingly for that day on April the 28th. Amen. And then also we moved our additional teaching session from this Sunday to April the 28th as well. Amen. That way my voice don't mess up on me trying to preach on Sunday plus doing that session Sunday night. And so we're going to move that session, amen, to Sunday evening, April the 28th at 5 o'clock. And we're looking forward to a wonderful time talking about the end times and prophecy. And so we're excited about that. And we'll be telling you more about that on Sunday morning. Amen. Also, it's hard to believe that Mother's Day is right around the corner. Amen. Hard to believe that we're about to approach the month of May. And then we're looking forward to a wonderful time. And then if you have a child that needs to be dedicated on Mother's Day, please let Elder and Sister Hickman know right away or Sister Greta so we can plan accordingly uh, to dedicate that child unto the Lord. Amen. And then also don't forget we have another Taking It to the Street event that is scheduled for the first Saturday of May, May the 4th. And uh, what it, like we have done last year, we are going to be giving out free hot dogs and drinks and chips, and we had a marvelous time. And so there's a sign-up sheet also available out in the foyer on the table. Amen. And so if you could help us with that on that day, thank you so very, very much. That is on Saturday, May the 4th, and we're looking forward to, amen, a wonderful time that day as well. Amen. Let's stand to our feet, turn to somebody, and tell them I love you and I appreciate you. 
Amen. Tell them that they are a blessing to the kingdom of God. Amen. If somebody comes to your mind this week, a saint of God, make sure you reach out and bless them and let them know you love them. Let them know you appreciate them. Let them know they're a blessing to the kingdom of God. And we thank God for each and every one of you. Amen, amen, amen. The Lord is good to us. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, the Lord is good to me. I can't thank him enough for his goodness. Amen. Elder Danny, would you come? And in closing, would you pray over the people of God? And let's just thank God for his goodness. The Bible says that he daily, everyone shout daily, loadeth us with benefits. Amen. We're blessed of the Lord. We're blessed people. When you really, really think about all the Lord has done for us, we are truly, truly blessed. Can you say amen? Amen. Let's thank God in closing today. Okay, Pastor, before you walk away, I would like for everybody just to raise your hands towards the Pastor. And let's begin to pour out prayers for him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we plead the power of your blood and pray that your anointing and your healing virtue would begin to flow upon his body. Through every part of his body, God, let your spirit just pour peacefully out on him like the oil, God, that ran down Aaron's beard. Lord, let your Holy Ghost just flow on him, God. Lord, let us give it him to see. Give him a double portion, Lord. Oh, Holy Ghost, flow upon him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we give you the glory, God. Strengthen him, God. Put angels on every side of him. Strengthen his legs and his body, God. Take away any pain and give him beauty for ashes. God, give him joy for sorrow, Lord. Give him strength in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Come on, let's keep praying right now. I feel such a presence in this house. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, we love you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let's just pray and ask God to be with us as we go forth out of this place. God, we love you and we praise you and thank you for what you have done tonight. We thank you for the wonderful message that you have pinned through Brother Brown's lips, oh God. And we thank you, God, for touching souls countlessly, Lord God. We pray, God, that angels would follow every person to their home, to their workplace, wherever they drive, whatever they do. We pray, God, that you would bring us back all safely. Touch families, heal, deliver. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, amen.